Today's Saturday, the 17th of October, and we start our expedition with 10 students from Shunkeda 1. Hello, everyone! Hello. <laughs> Hello, Bea. Do you have something to say to the camera? Yeah, my cookies are delicious. Yeah. They... You can prove it. You, you have to prove that before. <laughs> what? You have to prove that. Uh, I think so. <laughs> yes. Miguel thinks something, but we don't know what it is. Someone else? Say hello. Hi. Bye. Hello. Yeah, that's right. Hello, how are you? Thank you for coming. There are two girls around. Hi. 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 <laughs> Our visit to Pazo Bayon in Villanova de Arosa was organized by the Museum of Pontevedra as a complementary activity to Sergio Portela's retrospective exhibition Senso Sublime. Pazo Bayon, an extensive rural property with a freight of associations from the dark years of drag trafficking in Galicia to the desperate fight of family members of the young generation which was lost to an addiction that mired thousands of lives, has undergone a slow process of transformation from the times of the Oviña clan during the 1990s until its complete conversion into a renowned Galician winery. The front gates to which Carmen Avendaño and other mothers of Ergete Foundation changed themselves to protest against the apparent immunity local narcos enjoyed have not yet lost their evocative power, even though Sergio Portela's Adam and Eve on top of the entrance wall allude to the long-gone origins of this late medieval pazo whose connection with the history of the Spanish and Portuguese Northwest still remains. Looking back from the main building to the entrance, the visitor observes the stark contrast between the young saplings and immaculate stone pathway and the hectares upon hectares of centenarian vines. As the guide tried to make transparently clear to the group of guests and the artist, who committed himself to completing Pathabayon's metamorphosis through the medium of human-like sculptures, embedded in myth, legend and folk tradition, the older the vineyard the scarcest the output and the better the wine. The hundreds of cells, together with the amplitude of the dovecoat, symbolize the former glory of this stately home with privileged views of the surrounding area. Echoes from the outside and a remarkable effect of light and shadow combine perfectly with the distant church bells and the soft breeze that cradles the branches of a willow tree. The location of the main building is by no means arbitrary. The visitor sees the manor from every latitude and its dwellers, in turn, may oversee all corners of the property from the beautiful decorated interior. Sergio Portela's The Whisper presides the stone staircase and continues the reference to the variety of perspectives the patho offers. Seeing without being seen, hearing without being heard, and conversing in the prodigiously blossoming botanical garden. Right behind the old stables, at the crossroads between the winery and the patho, stands Saint Iro, immersed in deep thought. Primeval forefathers, secrets whispered in one's ear, medieval saints and Greek gods appear in the company of water fountains and other natural elements around which man-made structures establish a sober architectural order. The stables, however, no longer preserve their original function, as they have now been turned into an industrial workshop where up to 40,000 bottles of high-quality Alvarino wine are produced per year. After the juicing stage, temperature is regulated with the help of heat exchangers, and then the liquid is transferred carefully to stainless steel tanks for fermentation. And finally, to fine wood barrels in which the Alvarino will age for at least six months. 
According to Condes de Alvare, owners of the Pathabayon brand today, not one of the 40,000 bottles is left unsold. That may give us a more precise idea of the national and international demand for this expertly made Alvarino. The visit to the Pazo ends with a wine tasting. Our students took the opportunity to have a sip of this delicatessen, along with a few homemade biscuits they brought from home. Here they are, our ten protagonists. Back from Villanova, the group accompanied Sergio Portela to the Afundación building in the historic center of Pontevedra, where several of his unique resin and wooden pieces bring a new life to the refurbished building. Each sculpture establishes a direct line of sight with the rest of its partners, leading the visitors from one floor to the next, helping them to understand the importance of the spacious, streamlined design in the appreciation of the color scheme and the meanings attributed to emptiness. Greek myth is revisited at the very top of this building with the presence of Teucro, legendary founder of Pontevedra. Our final stop was to be found a few hundreds of meters from Teucro in the monument to the nine local young men who were shot during the Spanish Civil War, a monolith which has become the most recent addition to the urban landscape by the hand of Sergio Portela. The group rushed to the final meeting point as the dark clouds announced imminent rain showers. This, however, did not deter the participants from carrying on polishing their English, in spite of the false friends. Hi there. Why are you grabbing me? Grabbing? Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> recording. Recording me? Yeah, that's better. Yes. Very lovely. Now tired and soaking wet, the artist and our group of students and teachers from IES Shunkeira No. 1 in Pontevedra braved the storm and added the final stitch to this wonderfully crafted quilt whose every last piece revealed its hidden internal coherence with the generous help and didactic talent of Sergio Portela. <laughs>